Well, I'm concerned because Nathan close that I was supposed to have three pointers and I don't. Um, but are you excited about our future? Awesome, because I'm excited. Let me tell you why. Our world is getting more efficient. Inexpensive computers are helping more businesses do more things for less money at a logarithmic rate. Um, who here has seen the new McDonald's kiosks that take the place of the order worker? Yep. Uh, how about the red box? You've probably used a red box by now, right? The age of the kiosks is here. Why? Because technology marches on. Efficiencies are ever increasing. We learn more every day. We're improving, making every task easier. Really, this is good news. Um, I work in the broadcast industry, and a couple of years ago, a decision was made to um, automate news production. Instead of an audio operator, and a prompter operator, and a graphics operator, and a technical director, six positions were replaced with just two people, a producer and what we call the technical media producer, a, tech a technician that does all the things with the help of a computer. At first blush, this story is a story with a bad ending. People lost their jobs, right? And trust me, I was dreading it. I thought it was only going to make my job that much harder. You know what happened, though? I received less trouble calls. My job actually got a little easier. I was shocked at first, actually. But in hindsight, I clearly saw what happened. Technology had been slowly replacing their value as technical professionals without replacing them. They had no autonomy. The transition to studio automation simply was the tipping point. But now the people that were left were again in positions of real responsibility and had much more pride in their jobs. They were, they were actually a joy to work with. Sometimes it's hard to notice amongst the din of the 24-7 news cycle that most modern statistics and trends are positive. Smoking, down. Teenage pregnancy, down. Stock market, near record highs, although not lately. <laughs> Actually, as crazy as it sounds, it's almost hard to find negative trends. Even gun violence is down since the 90s. I'm just going to flip out. These are all positive trends. And I had a hard time finding negative ones. I did find a couple. Really, most of us should be happy about the direction things are going. But we're not. Did you ever wonder why? I think we know, we all know one reason. The labor dynamic is changing, and we're feeling it. As awesome as our country is, and as positive as the trends are, a whole lot of people are unhappy. Some people blame the soulless corporations, and others blame workers that want $15 an hour for a marginal job. But here's the deal. Here's what I think the root of the discontent is. The system simply does not need unskilled labor anymore. <laughs> Strong words, right? Industry simply does not need very many unskilled or marginalized workers. It used to be when productivity went up, so did wages. But somewhere in the 70s, a disconnect happened. The value of labor stopped following productivity. And it's my opinion that this trend is not going to change. Actually, I think it's going to accelerate. You've heard it said we don't manufacture anything anymore, right? But did you know that manufacturing and services as a percentage of the US GDP has been stable for 70 years? We still make and do a lot of things. It's simply the amount of labor needed that has gone down. Everything's being automated. Here's an example. Um, Tesla Automotive. Most of you are familiar with Tesla Automotive, right? 
the people that make those cool electric cars. Did you hear about the October surprise? Last October, people with Tesla Model S's woke up on the 15th to a new feature on their control panel. It's called Autopilot. Autopilot does things like automatically change lanes for you when you use the turn signal, and it keeps the car in the lane, even on curving roads. You can let go of the wheel, and it will drive the car for you. But, in my opinion, the real news came uh, about five days later when people started to report that Autopilot feature was quickly improving itself. As more people learned how to, or learned, as more people used it, it learned how to drive better. It used machine learning to figure out what people wanted it to do. For example, one gentleman reported that on the first day, the autopilot wanted to take every exit off the highway. <laughs> But by the fifth day of driving, it no longer tried to exit. It had learned from the other people, or from other people driving that same route, that that was not the typical desired path. You could say that Tesla is marginalizing the skill of driving. I mean, I'd like to think that by now you've contemplated all of the ways there are tasks that will be simplified by truly autonomous cars. Delivery, travel, freedom for the disabled. Think about that one. Reduced road construction, logarithmic accident rate reduction. We could talk all night about who and what will be affected by just this one advancement that's literally 10 or 20 years away. Consider this. Children born today will likely never need a driver's license. <laughs> These advancements in autonomous systems certainly will not be limited to cars. Consider how they'll change industry in general. The systems will be given goals, learn on their own how, the best process to achieve them. Talk about efficient. We're building on new epiphanies daily. We're already at the advent of low marginal cost of replication in manufacturing. Haven't you been amazed at the low price of some things you can buy lately? <laughs> This new level of automated learning will usher in a near zero cost of replication. I mean, perhaps post-scarcity society won't be reserved for science fiction anymore. Now, imagine the future. Let's say the year 2035 a time when cars don't, are not driven by people anymore, including children, and much manufacturing has low marginal costs. Those are awesome trends. However, because of those improvements, and they are improvements, it's also a time where the majority of unskilled labor jobs will be gone. What happened to our future is awesome, right? But efficiency is not the problem. After all, the jobs being eliminated are being eliminated by beneficial systems. They're only there to help us, making things cheaper and more available to all. This is a good thing. But the employment issue is a big problem. We as humans love to be productive. It's in our blood. You know, in my opinion, we need to change the way we think to make this work. And you know, actually I think it's sort of kind of coming together like it's supposed to. The youth of today, people that frankly at this point don't have the resources to buy a lot of stuff, are realizing they don't need a lot of stuff. They're going for access over ownership. Consumers paying for things only when required. Accessing goods or services uh, that you wouldn't they wouldn't otherwise be able to afford or even need long-term. Cars, uh, accommodations, parking spots, and tools. You know, I have to laugh when I see baby boomers, and I'm one of them, by the way, moaning about kids having their noses in their phones all the time. But I smile at this. They are transitioning. This is not trivial. What worked in the past won't work in the future. By having their noses in their phones and by other non-traditional habits, the youth of today are naturally mastering, mastering the processes they will need to transition to the future. However, the transition is going to be painful. 
And I think the transition has to be painful because we need a bit of a revolution, a sea change in the way we think. The majority of unskilled labor, unemployable in the regular sense, and by that I mean unemployed by industry, they'll only be able to be employed as self-employed. <laughs> so what's the answer? The system has clearly stopped attributing significant value to people's labor output. How else are we going to contribute to society? When there are no jobs, is it fair to call somebody that's unemployed lazy? I feel that we have an inherent desire to be productive. We should have options. But what are our choices? Because the majority of unskilled labor will be unemployed by industry. This is our future. Do we keep punishing people for being unemployed when there simply are no jobs? You know, personally, I'm excited about uh, Germany and Finland. They're experimenting with the basic income concept. It's sometimes called the basic wage or wage floor. It has potential to help unemployed people be productive. Well, that's a subject for a whole other TED Talk. <laughs> But we have to choose. The jobs won't be there. Will we choose to go the way we have been and have a minority of educated and wealthy living amongst a sea of poor people, living under the stigma of being unemployed and likely on welfare? Or will we, let, will we choose to give everyone a little autonomy, let them decide how best to contribute to society without the stigma of being on welfare. Anyone that knows me knows I have a huge respect for the working man. My father was a union lather. Talk about obsolete jobs, look that one up. But I'm sorry, I will have little sympathy for any society that's surprised when truck drivers are replaced with self-driving trucks in the year 2025. And for those people that think the fast food workers are going to eliminate their jobs by asking for $15 an hour? Don't worry about that. Automation and the elimination of those unskilled labor jobs is coming no matter what the wage is. I really think the future is awesome. We just need to choose the right path. But we can't wait. We need to start contemplating that answer now. Thank you.